Hi, I'm David Spencer and welcome back to Gardening with Bugs. On today's episode, I want to bust that myth about the lady beetle versus the ladybug. So stay tuned. All right, so this photo here got posted on Facebook on a, on a gardening group I was um, part of. Um, I didn't pay a lot of attention to it and then it got reposted and then reposted again. And then suddenly this was going around a whole bunch of different social media platforms that I, that I pay attention to. And the comments were a bit concerning because people just took it as, um, as truth. And they were talking about uh, ways to trap and, and destroy Harmoniax or Divis, this Asian lady beetle. Um, and it kind of, it irked me a little bit because there's a, <laughs> I think there's more discussion to be had before we started killing these things. So first of all, the Asian lady beetle designation for this kind of, um, annoys me because calling lady beetles or ladybugs is just as irresponsible as making fun of the British kid that calls them ladybirds when you were back when you were in elementary school. And maybe I did. I don't know why I said that. But those names used to just be kind of a geographical thing. If you're from Britain, they were ladybirds. I grew up with ladybugs, and that's what I'm going to call them. Uh, some people called them lady beetles. So you shouldn't be using that to describe a specific species because um, they are all one and the same. They are all coccinellids, which is a type of beetle. Um, so it's better to use either a common name that is very descriptive of that species, like the bottom one here is the seven-spotted ladybug. Um, it's hard to get that one confused with others because of the seven spots. Um, and the one above that we call it Harmonia axiotidis, or but it has a bunch of common names. And it's called the many color, multicolored ladybug. It's called the harlequin ladybug, or lady beetle, or lady bird, whatever you want. Um, so sometimes you gotta use those Latin names as kind of the best descriptor. So let's drop that ladybug versus lady beetle and just say Harmonia axiotidis versus, I don't know, the rest of the ladybugs. Now, first of all, the first thing I had to laugh at was um, this one says like harmful to dogs um, or toxic or something like that. Um, but other people were saying like, watch out, it'll kill your dog. <laughs> and I, I just, I imagined these uh, ladybugs attacking my, my little dog and I thought, oh my gosh, this is um, a little bit out of hand. Um, the, some insects are toxic, yep. Um, most animals like dogs would immediately recognize that by the smell or the color or some sort of warning on device. If your dog, for whatever reason, has the inclination to eat a whole bunch of them, it probably would get sick. I actually don't know if they are truly toxic or not. I would imagine that the smell that they give off, that protecting odor when they, when they go into diapause, um, it probably would upset your stomach. Uh, but my point is, a lot of them would do that. A bucket of any ladybugs is probably going to hurt your dog, so uh, don't feed your dog buckets of ladybugs, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, so that one you gotta laugh at. Um, do they bite? Yes, all of them do. All of them have huge mouthpieces because they're actually a remarkable generalist predator that um, that can go after a variety of prey, not just soft body prey, but sometimes they can crush sort of harder exoskeletons. So they're very useful in the garden for that reason, eating things like scale that other, that other predators might not. Um, so yes, if you crawl around long enough, uh, they will bite you. Even the tiniest ones will. Um, and I did read a study um, about that um, and they found that it's not just for thirst, which might be why they bite, um, but in some cases they're actually just curious and probing, and in some cases they have even fed on blood a little bit. Um, this researcher tried to rear them on blood and could not, so that's not a complete protein form or not a sufficient uh, source of food. So they're obviously not going to just feed on animals in that way. Um, but they have the potential bite, and they all do. So that was the other thing I wanted to recognize was like, biting isn't necessarily aggression, and that's the first point. And then the second point is um, a whole bunch of these things will bite anyways. It doesn't matter which species it is. Uh, ladybugs can bite. So the other part is talking about invasive versus native. And um, I'm still kind of debating whether or not I want to go into huge depth about this. But let me just say this quickly. The, um, Sometimes the definition of invasive um, or, or native is just based on Europeans coming to an area and recording things. 
and in that particular time when they saw them they decided that those were native plants but keep in mind like Polynesian by boat Polynesians by boat were, were bringing with them uh, seeds to grow the food that they would need to survive on on distant islands that had never been touched by humans before so they were bringing these species there that when the Europeans discovered those islands as well um, they called them native species um, it's maybe even true of like the ice age receding and leaving all this open territory which was inhabited by all these plants and animals were they invasive at that time uh, were they foreign uh, so that the debate gets a little bit weird but the reason why it's important for us now is like governments need to know when something is is foreign we need to quickly assess it to see if it's going to do damage if we can control it anyways um, so they need to know if we can control it should we and so it is it is a worthwhile knowing what's where something originates from um, and so i don't i don't want to stop people from being aware of that i think it's fairly important to know that this asian lady beetle or this harmonia actridis has come from asia um, it was introduced a couple times uh, there's no evidence that those introductions were necessarily the populations that have exploded but we also know that because we've been moving plant material for thousands of years that it's likely these have just come in on boats um, anyways um, but what's really important to to distinguish is something foreign is not necessarily invasive and that is by like uh, government definitions because invasive is that it's foreign and causing some sort of economic um, it is, is in some way a pest so it's um, something that we want to control now harmonia actridis is not necessarily an invasive species unless we just talk about how it's a nuisance to homeowners because they go inside because that is the official control of harmonia actridis is just weather stripping and keeping your windows closed um, because that's most of the complaints come from them coming inside being stinky and and that's really the problem outside we do not think that they have a negative impact yes they are introduced and they're eating aphids so they're in that same guild we say where they're they could be competing with native ones um, but what we found is a lot of the native ladybugs in north america i'm talking about right now um, a lot of the native ladybugs um, tend to need a lot of forest cover so when we've cleared those forests or we've turned up grasslands and put in just a single um, monocrop of like wheat or sorghum what tends to happen is we get some of these invasive ladybugs established there and control those aphids and that wouldn't have happened with the native ones so we actually believe that um, and this is work done by um, some of the land-grant universities in the states uh, they believe that these actually have filled a niche uh, we've we've created a situation for them to to succeed they're not necessarily in the forest competing with the with the native ones um, and we don't know that for sure but we also don't know that they are not that they are for sure interfering so the official policy is they're here we can't control them anyways um, they're eating aphids for the most part let's just see where this where this gets us because aphids are still uh, economically the number one pest in the world so any aphid predator is, is sometimes deemed as a benefit even if it might have some complications and that's uh, for a whole nother <laughs> another discussion another time uh, so right here in the garden do you want to kill them um, I wouldn't that seems really strange because they also they also need a high density of pests in order to lay eggs their trigger this is harmonia actridis their their trigger to lay eggs is a high density of pests higher than most of the native early season um, predators will get to will um, will care for uh, so like um, hoverflies that come in, they're start. this is April, so they're coming in here already. They'll lay, lay their eggs on a single aether, next to a single aether, that's their threshold, is one. These harmonia, because their larvae are going to eat a lot, they eat a lot, they wait for these populations to explode. So interestingly enough, I have this hop, and it gets covered in aphids, and it's an invasive aph aphid. Um, this area was all hops at one point, and the hops all got dug up because somebody accidentally brought over the hop aphid from Europe, and there was no natural predators that could control because the population just explodes. But every year, I get this harmonia actridis. They come, they multiply like crazy on this hop, and then they spread out into the rest of the garden. And I don't mind that. This is a, it's an important aphid control on this plant where I really see like a few other predators showing up and nothing to really control it. So just like in the massive wheat fields where they get a huge establishment um, and nothing else is sort of there to do it yet, 
um, this, they might have a role in the garden as well. So that's really your call whether or not um, you want to get rid of this guy and hope that a native ladybug will show up. But um, you know, it's already there, it showed up first, it's going to lay its eggs. Really what you want is a bit of competition anyways. Uh, there's going to be parasites and stuff getting out there, you want those aphids to get knocked down. Um, if the aphids are knocked down, that thing's not, the harmony actually just isn't going to lay its eggs there anyways. Now lastly, the, what I really want to po poke fun at it for this uh, photo, and I don't know who posted it, I'm not going to give the photo credits because I'm making fun of it especially, but um, this has been passed around North America quite a bit is where I'm seeing it from, and Sempitata, the seven spotted ladybug, is also an introduced species. So the idea that this is this protect ladybug that we have to protect, um, and Axodinus is this invasive one that we need to destroy, right there shows you that both of them are introduced. So that distinguish between ladybug, the distinguishment between ladybug and lady beetle doesn't really hold true in this particular video anyways. So that's it. If you have any further questions about this, um, I'm happy to do a quick little research or if it's something that I left out, um, I can try to answer it in the comments. Um, but otherwise, just go out there and remember, I think the, you know, what's important for me in this video is that I, I trying to take that academic um, commercial uh, knowledge and bring it to the home garden. So um, I think it's important when there is this information. I mean, a lot of, pe a lot of people know it. As many as I saw comments, uh, as many comments as I saw about destroying them, there were people saying, hey, hold on, they're, they're ladybugs just like the rest of them, and they're, they're a benefit to your garden. So maybe this one's not as important, but I, I like to think that this can be a source of, of the straight good information um, that's maybe not widely known in, in a lot of gardening communities. So, so please um, give me feedback, um, ask any questions that you want. If I don't know the answer, I'll look them up. Uh, but that's it for this episode, so I hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.